Right. Have so. you found, have you found yourself, uh, like, I know you, you're not, you're not drinking anymore. I don't, I don't know if you're sober. I don't know if the, if that's a term that you even use, but you've, you kind of put away the sauce. Is it forever or no? Um, are you saying the word sober? Is that not correct for you? Is that not true? No, it's not correct. Cause I'll fucking, I'll take a couple of hits off a joint or I'll eat like a, a, a gummy bear or okay, whatever. Okay. Okay. All right. Are. Um, but even then, then I'll just, I'll just start doing, I just realized I'm sort of like a habit guy. So like one of my habits now is straightening up and going through my shit. And I just get, I get like into shit. Right. I don't get addicted. I get into shit. And then I have like this fucking habit that I, right. I don't have to go to meetings and I can just stop doing it. I just wake up one day. I'm like, all right, I'm done doing this shit. Right. And that's what, that's what, that's what drinking was just kind of like it's something you just were done doing. I had, I had a kid and I was legally fucking hammered. It's my drinking started with when I got really busy in this business. And like, um, I'm telling you, dude, like how hard writers work in this business and you know, those first two, three seasons where I was in there every single day slugging it out before I had kids and I had to sort of like delegate a little more and, and be a little smarter with my time. Like you would come home, especially on days when the script wasn't working, the, the level of thinking that you just did for, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours, you, I would come home and I, was, I would just be fucking fried. And yeah. there was just nothing better than coming home and taking a really fucking great bottle of bourbon and pouring it over a giant fucking ice cube. Yeah. But what happened was that, that, you know, one finger became two, became three, became I'll pour it up over the ice cube, became I'll have another one, right. became I'll hide the third one on this side of my leg and hopefully the ice won't touch the glass so my wife won't hear it. <laughs> right. And I was like, am I literally doing this? And which made me wonder... Can you drink yourself as a non-addictive personality? Can you drink yourself into actually being an alcoholic? Because I know that you can get like addicted to sugars. And I definitely got addicted to tobacco, nicotine with, with cigars, yeah. which I'm battling that again because I had a kid. It was my wife's birthday, my birthday, and Father's Day. So the cigars were just flying at me. And uh, I just kept justifying it. Oh, it's the day before my birthday. Last day, I'm 51. Good excuse to light one up. Yeah. <laughs> Turned 52 the next day. I got on Zoom with Bartnick, Verzi, and all my buddies, Josh, and all of the guys. And then the next day, I did Rogan. And my buddy, Mike Binder, had left a box of cigars. And it was three days in a row. Right. And then the devil was fucking at its talons in my back again. So um, I've smoked two more since then. I have two more left. So I'm just going like, all right, June, I'm going sideways. I'm going to pick my spot to enjoy those next two. And then I'm just not going to um, replenish my, you know, my cigar box. And then I'll just be fine. Cause that's, right. that's another thing that I learned how my drinking went out of control was I brought it. I, I learned about it. So I learned the, Ooh, the higher brow liquors, you know? Right. 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 And, and then I, I brought the devil into my house. And back in the day, if I wanted to drink, I had to go out. So there was so many nights that I felt like having a drink, but I'm not fucking putting my pants on. And, you know, it was the 90s. Put moose in my hair back when I had some. <laughs> I'm just, I don't want to deal with that, you know? Right, right. So um, so it's gone for good for now. It's gone for good for now. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, something when I feel that I could actually go back to it and it wouldn't be a fucking problem, which I just, I don't, I don't believe that it, that it, it, it wouldn't be. So, um, you know, there is occasions like when I'm out with my wife and we're having a really nice meal and then they bring this bottle of wine that compliments it. Yeah. You know, she takes a sip like, Oh, you know, that's, that's when it's fucking hard. But, right. Um, right. but I got to tell you, waking up in the morning, you know, you don't have the booze bag face and you got a flat stomach. That's, you know, it, it's, it's fucking great up until about five thirty six o'clock. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, look, I, I, like, I go back and forth as I've, this show is all about having a drink with somebody and, you know. Uh, it's I'm something, sorry, I fucked that up. You did bad. No, it's, no, a lot of, so many of my friends are actually sober too. I mean, like, you know, Bobby's one of my best friends and he's been sober for years. So, so many people in my life are so sober now. It almost makes me sometimes go, oh, maybe I should 
maybe I should slow down or stop or, but it's not become an issue. Slowing down is always a great thing. The advice yeah. I would give you, well, you're married, so I think you'll be all right. Yeah. See, I was single for so long. I would, I, uh, the joke I've been doing is don't, don't use up all your fun days. Right. 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 No, you but know what it really you, is. You get to your forties and fifties and all of a sudden you got to like, you, it's, you're like in damage control. Like I got to start doing yoga. Right. I got to, uh, you know, I got to eat Brussels sprouts, but doing shit like that is not a bad thing. But I mean, dude, is there anything more fun than fucking just getting shit faced, being on a boat, getting hammered and it's being at favorite. a game? Yeah. It's my fucking favorite. Other favorite. people that are drinking. It's fun uh, as shit. Like I was a real like happy drunk. So right. I, and I had a lot of good time. I didn't get into fights and shit like that. I, I had a great, I had a great fucking time, <laughs> but I, I can definitely, uh, you know, there are definitely times, especially uh, with stress, which is not a good reason to drink. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel myself going like, God damn, I could really do, I could, you know, but, but it, my brain immediately goes into not, I would like to have a drink. It's be like, I would like to give a bottle a nice fucking liver punch, you know, like take <laughs> half of it out. Right. So that's funny. I'm the, I'm the opposite. Stress doesn't usually make me drink. In fact, stress makes me uh, overwhelmed and anxious. And I usually just want to, uh, you know, do, uh, do nothing. I usually, my appetite gets suppressed when I'm super stressed. I can't really eat that. You know, a lot of people say they stress eat. I do the opposite. And then for me, I, I usually love having a drink when I'm in a good mood, when things are positive or like when we're going out to eat and I'm excited, we'll go out and her and I'll have drinks. And it's usually only then when I'm stressed or I'm depressed or I'm down. Luckily, I never want the sauce because it just sounds annoying. It sounds exhausting. It sounds, I, I don't know. Cause I know it's not going to make me happy. So for some reason, if I'm bummed out. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, if you have that, do you have that? Do you have yeah, those? Yeah. Abilities. I just but, like, but I often want to have one yeah. talking shit and talking about <laughs> yeah. sports and shit. That's yeah. all I did on the fucking road, man. When I would go on the road, like I would finish when I was working, you know, Verzi, Barnick, Lawhead, Nate, Craig, all of those guys. That's all I did. And I, and I hated going to the spot, right? Like the club. I'd always feel like a fucking, you know, I just felt like a loser. If I walked in the club and everybody there was younger than me, I'm like, I felt like I fucking stayed back like 50 grades. And I was like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I love the fucking dive bar. Yeah. With very quiet music. Back in my 20s, I liked that. I just wasn't into that. scene thing. No, like I fucking hated myself. So I didn't want to go into this place where everybody seemed to be like in love with themselves. It was just reinforcing <laughs> what I thought about myself is like, I'm going to go into this quiet fucking place where nobody's fucking with me. Right. And, um, yeah, I was a big time nerd and I was into like seeing tourist attractions and going to ballparks and shit like that. But then somewhere along the line, you know, I started drinking like I was in the fucking, you know, trying to get into the rat pack somewhere along the line, you know, I started making a little money. Yeah. One time, you know, a couple times out there, I think like three times I did the tour bus thing. Right. And, uh, oh, dude, that was the funniest shit ever. So that it's thing, worth it. It, it. it You know what? It was definitely fucking worth it because it kept me and my friends out of trouble. Yeah. Because that was our club and right. no one was allowed in. We just, we would do the show. We would be talking about what we were going to do on the bus, what movie we were going to watch. What sporting event? Oh, and we would build the tours around sporting events. You're just having sleepovers with your friends on the road. That's what Absolutely. Just, yeah, it's grown up we were all over. fucking married guys or in relationships, so we would fucking, like, dude, I did one, one, I did one run. We, went to, we ended up at the Kentucky Derby. Oh, how fun. Uh, oh, dude, that was great. And I ended up doing a show in Kentucky before, right before the Derby. And I had my seersucker suit with the bow tie and the little fucking uh, Music Man hat. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, should I wear this on the show tonight? I'm going to fucking do this. So I put it on, right? You know, and, you know, those guys were all laughing, going, oh, man, they're going to they're gonna go nuts when they see you, right? So yeah. I was standing in the wings. And I can't remember if it was Verzi or Lawhead was bringing me up. And uh, I think it was Lawhead. And I was like, all of a sudden I was standing there going, like, oh, my God, was this a dumb idea? 
am I in Orlando right now and I'm going to come out with Mickey Mouse ears on and, and expecting the locals to be excited? Do right. they actually secretly hate the Kentucky Derby because it brings a bunch of fucking yahoos in? Right. And I was like, oh, no. And I was like, well, too late now. And I went out and it was the initial clap and then they took in the suit. It was one of the best ovations I ever got. They went uh, fucking fuck nuts. Yeah. But then I had to keep it on. And eight minutes in, I was like pouring sweat. And I was finally like, guys, can I take this fucking hat off? I'm dying. 